and uh, it was an inspiration to do that event in, in the building because it was, uh, well, it was a fantastic building. And uh, so I decided to base my ideas of social computer around that building, being the first uh, example building, the first example location. And uh, as part of that work, which lasted about two years, um, we uh, ended up going to the uh, European Commission IST, which is an uh, Information Society Technologies uh, Research Conference. Uh, where I managed to get a presentation uh, to give a networking session and a brainstorm um, to uh, explain the idea and to see uh, if there was um, synergy with the uh, ideas and uh, technologies going on in the European Commission research area. Um, we also took a camera and we filmed some uh, interviews of uh, people we met, um, including the European Commission, the organizers of the event, and. Uh, a variety of different uh, technology researchers and uh, political and commercial people. Um, and one interesting example I'd like to show you now is the, uh, the interview of uh, Pete Kircher. I'm Pete Kircher. Uh, the position I hold at the moment, I've held many, uh, I'm, European in, I'm Vice President of the European Institute of Design and Disability. Now, that seems already to put you straight into a field which says disability, and it seems to be rather restrictive. In fact, the word disabled, I prefer to use the word disabled because a person is disabled by his environment or her environment. We don't see why the, the human being should have to uh, live through awkward life situations simply because the design process and the manufacturer have not taken real human needs into, into account. The process of theorizing, the theoretical research, has come a long, long way, and we've made giant leaps forward. Uh, and perhaps the most important thing is that inside the European Union, inside the Commission itself, uh, there has been a dawning realization, which I'm glad to say now is a very strong realization, that design for all is a fundamental approach to enabling the European citizen to live and function well inside European society. Our youth-focused culture of the past has to have a few changes. <laughs> We've been spoiled all along. We've always expected the world to be made for us. Well, uh, we still expect the world to be made for us. There is a very telling need to for, for people of my generation to understand what it is that makes the kids tick these days. There is a focus, for example, a very interesting focus on youth culture in the, in the model of the, the social computer. And young people are more proactive. They are more inclined to go out and to go to socialize together. This is, to a certain extent, an answer because I can see in this the same dream or a similar dream, not the same one, but a similar dream to the one that we had 25, 30 years ago when we were dreaming of having some form of mechanism or some form of uh, organization that would help us to, to improve ourselves, uh, to improve the world for the future. And it's very encouraging to see a, a younger generation that is now looking to improve with specifics. People coming in and talking about coming in from the IST world, particularly coming in and, uh, and, and talking about how they react when they hear the word social computer, uh, uh, because it's a challenge to them, and it would be very interesting to hear what they have to say. Uh, on the other hand, don't forget that you're using the word social, and there are a lot of very well-qualified sociologists out there who might have a lot to say about it as well. There's some very valid things to say about it. Any new, forward-looking... Uh, experiment of this kind must take accessibility of the environment and of the uh, means and facilitations that are involved in it into, in, into account. The message that I received yesterday from the presentation was that we're talking about a container of some kind uh, and certainly a container like this should try to be as inclusive as possible. And I don't want it to become overly academicized. 
uh, I don't want it to be the sort of thing that becomes the, the subject of, of very learned and educated publications that nobody reads for any reason except to comment on them in other learned publications uh, and therefore ultimately just a matter of, uh, of, of uh, considerable further naval contemplation which I detest. Imagine society as a computation, as a metaphor. So, um, well, like a computer, a computer is made up of many different components which all work together uh, in different ways. And uh, there are some similarities with the way you can look at this, uh, a computer, and the way you can look at a society or a city, for instance, or um, also a, a building even, an organization. You have groups, you have rules, you have... Uh, uh, something going from A to B uh, to C, etc. You have inputs and outputs, and on the overall, you have a computation. So on a metaphorical level, the idea is something about how does society compute and how, how can we uh, optimize the computation of society. Computers are being optimized all the time, yet uh, people don't seem to be able to optimize their society very quickly. Uh, it's a very slow and bureaucratic process, as I'm sure you know. The, the idea of having a building in the city, which is called a social computer, well, the idea is something like having a test bed, uh, the same way that in a company you have a, uh, you know, 50 computers, but you uh, test out your new software on one of the computers first so it doesn't crash the system. If it crashes on one computer, it doesn't matter. And they call this a testbed machine. And uh, in, in this metaphor, in this idea, the social computer building is a test center for ideas that are high risk.